Brandon Staley, if he hasn't started looking for a job yet, he should probably start looking right now because I think it's probably over with. Chargers fans been calling for his job. The media kind of been calling his job. And I think that I think right now, after this game, I feel like he deserves it. The Chargers was up 27-0 heading into like the second quarter, almost the end of the second. Trevor Lawrence had four interceptions in the sec by the second quarter. Asante Samuel, he had three interceptions. He had the hat trick. So it was looking like the Jaguars were – Fully away, it looked like they were about to get their first round elimination, and the Chargers were smiling at the halftime. You know, even though the Chargers, they ended up, uh, they having to fin finish that second quarter with the field goal. They was looking happy. Everyone was smiling. Justin Herbert looked confident. But I think when I looked at the game, I never thought I never thought that Justin Herbert fully had the game in hand. I, like when I looked at when I look at Trevor Lawrence, I'd be like, okay, that's some Peyton Manning in him. He got some Eli, Eli Manning in him. He got some dog in him. You know, he looked like he could, the comeback kid. But I look at Justin Herbert, I feel like when the game starts going down, he starts going down. When the game goes up, he goes up. Justin Herbert always moves with the momentum to me. I don't know. Do yeah. you see the same thing I see when I look at him? Um. Nah, I mean, well, yeah, my bad. I, 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 I do, but I don't. I definitely feel... I never see the the comparison to Peyton Manning, um, the, but I feel like he can have better command of now, the offense. When I say um, just, that's with uh, that's more that's what I was talking about with Trevor Lawrence. But when I'm talking about Justin Herbert, mm -hmm. I'm saying he's. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with how he moves with momentum when the game goes up and when the game goes down? Uh, um, I feel like uh, also like the lucky for that. If, I feel like it kind of depends on the defense because we've seen sometimes you know some defenses he plays, he plays you know. When you, my bad. When you say better, when you when you say better throughout, I mean when you say moves up, you talking about like throughout the season or throughout the game type thing? Just throughout throughout games. I feel like when the momentum's high, he goes mm -hmm. high, but when the momentum's low, he goes low. He doesn't fight yeah. against the adversity at times, but he does. He does with injury. Remember when he got hurt his ribs? He came in, he played good, but I feel like yeah. when the crowd when the crowd was quiet, you know, Justin Herbert, he was just he would just keep on picking that, keep on picking on him. But when the crowd started to come yep. against him, they started yelling at him instead. He started backing in the corner. He stopped punching back, stopped fighting back. Yeah, I mean, I I, I definitely seen that a little bit, but I feel like a lot. But I feel like also too, maybe like you know, like you had mentioned Brandon Staley earlier. I feel like if he was able to call a better game down the stretch, I feel like they wouldn't. That wouldn't even have been an issue to be honest. Um, totally. But I definitely see what you're saying. I see like that Jaguars that Jaguars uh, stadium that shit started to get rocking. That's why. I, you know, I put so much emphasis on, you know, sometimes on that home field advantage because I feel like that does play a part. Um, but I do, like you said, too, like when the Chargers went up with 27-0 or not even 27-0, they was up like 17-0 and you still even seen Justin Herbert, you know, on third down just picking these guys apart, not even missing a beat. So I definitely see what you're saying there, too. But, yeah, like when that defense started rocking, though, and when that crowd started getting loud, I definitely did see Justin Herbert start to kind of decline in his performance. He went, what, 273, one touchdown, zero interception. It's not like he played a bad game. It just when the, when the going got oh, yeah. tough, he wasn't making a play that needed to be made. And I, like you said, I put a lot of I put a lot of the blame on coaching. But if the, if you had the opportunity, would you move on from Justin Herbert or would you move on from Staley? No, nah, definitely not, man. I feel like Justin Herbert, that's that's a that's a generational talent. And um and to be honest, too, I feel like I did. I kept a pretty close eye on this game. I feel like even on even down the stretch, I feel like um, I mean it was a few throws that Justin Herbert probably could have made on third down that could have you know maybe sealed the game. Like but I feel like even like it was, yeah, yeah, that was a high throw right there. Yeah, and they uh, you're right because instead of them um, going for a field goal, they could have had a touchdown right there. He missed them high on that one. But Justin Herbert, he I mean he played pretty well just throughout. Like you say, he did he didn't play a bad game. But there definitely was a few throws that he definitely could have made to, like, kind of, like, make him elite, you know? So that's definitely things that he definitely needs to work on going into next uh, next year, I would definitely say. But, yeah, I think they – if anything, they should – they would they would move on from Staley, if anything. They wouldn't move on from Herbert. Herbert is definitely one of those guys that you wouldn't want to move on from. Um, he's a great locker room guy. Um, everybody on the team loves him. Um, and, uh, yeah, everybody in the NFL knows that, shit, they would love, they would love to have a guy like Justin Herbert on their team. I think well, talent anybody, like that. Yeah, talent like that. Anybody would have would love to have Justin Herbert. And you seen at the end of the game towards the fourth quarter or in the fourth quarter towards the end of the game, it got crunch time. The Jaguars ended up making a, a great comeback and they had a chance to go. I want to say they had a chance to make it 28 to 30 or 27 to 30. They could have just went for the field goal. But right before that, right after the touchdown, you seen 
you seen uh, Bosa. He ended up getting frustrated, and he took his helmet off. He slammed it on the ground because he said that the offensive lineman did a false start. The ref didn't end up calling it. And then he, after he threw his helmet and slammed it, he tried the ref or his, the coach ended up picking it up. He grabs it again, slams it once again. Do you feel like I feel you any of this? Do you feel like any of this game, any of this loss, has to go on the Bosa? No, I wouldn't say so. Just because um, we we all seen the game, and you know when uh, the game was twenty seven to seven, we all thought you know Chargers had this game in the bag, which they should have had the game in the bag. Um, even when the uh, Jacks came out and scored, um, you know, coming out of halftime, made the game 27-14. Um, still, Chargers should have this game in the bag. Um, they should at least score, you know, at least. I mean, it's easy for me to say because I'm not in the game or ca calling the plays. But um, I feel like they could at least score, whether it was field goals or touchdowns, they could at least score maybe like seven, another touchdown or even 14 points to, to really put them over the edge. Because when you look at the final score, you know, that would have made the, a huge difference. You know, at least a touchdown would have made one. So I feel like that was just a huge letdown. Um, I feel like the defense played um, – they played as good as they could be. They, as good as they could really – they played as good as they could really play in, um, you know, in the first half. Second half, the offense, didn't, you know, they couldn't score. So, um, you know, I feel like I was just a this was a team loss, though. This was a team loss, in my opinion. So I, I'm going to agree with that. But no – so no blame goes to Bosa, even though – his actions end up leading towards the two point conversion, which later end up led to the field goal for the win. No blame, not nah. one percent, not no blame to Bosa. No, I don't blame Bosa. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm a agree with that. The only thing no no blame deserves to Bosa just because I think he was frustrated overall, just from coaching, from player wise. It's like, damn, he knew it was coming. It was down. They all just up twenty seven to zero. He felt the momentum. He knew that. They were choking, and once again, he was watching it un unravel right before his eyes, and he knew it was nothing he could do about it. It was like it was the mm -hmm. part two to a horror movie. Once, like, once again, we've seen it a couple of seasons ago. It feels like every season the Chargers end up choking either in the playoffs or right before the playoffs, trying to make it to the playoffs, or maybe a divisional game they choke. It's like they know it's just the chokers. Yeah, I was going to mention that too, how um... – you, uh, yeah, how you mentioned it as well. Uh, Bozo, yeah, like I was just going to say he was acting out of emotion. Um, but, like, I definitely yeah, I definitely don't think that had anything to do with them losing or I wouldn't put a blame, any blame on him. Um, but it was funny. For some reason, I, like, when I first saw the clip, I think uh, – you see, I thought he only slammed it once. I thought that was the first time when he took it. Like, it seemed like he, like, the coach tried to give him his helmet and he, like, took it and, like, slammed it, which I thought was pretty funny. I'm just like, why would he do? Like, you know, it's like, damn, he just gave you the helmet. He gonna slam it on the floor again. That's kind of an asshole move. But, um, yeah, I didn't know he did it twice. So yeah, I mean, he definitely deserved a penalty for that. Um, and I, I and, and it makes sense though, because when I first seen the play too, I did. I was like, damn, why he get a penalty if he slammed the, the, the helmet on his own, you know, his own sideline, you know? But yeah, I didn't see that first initial helmet slam. So.